Hey guys, my name is Jeff Rojas. I'm a photographer and author based out of New York City. And today I'm gonna to share with you guys my first PC build, which to be honest, isn't terribly difficult unless you're doing it for your first time. And then you're like, it's expensive. This is gonna be an expensive paperweight. But luckily that wasn't the case. So I wanted to do a shout out quickly to Bitwit for his start to finish guide on how to build your first PC, which is the only reason I was able to press start on that without feeling like everything was gonna completely light on fire by the end of it. With that, those of you that are interested in a build that works for you as a videographer, a photographer, think about what I put together here. So this talking headshot that's happening here ends and we're gonna jump into the performance section, the PC build, and all those little glorious macro shots. I'll see you guys soon. What I have here is a $4,000 PC with a powerful CPU, fast memory, fast storage, and a great graphics card that runs circles around the iMac Pro, especially for the price point. How much faster? The base entry level $5,000 iMac without any modification runs Cinebench R15 at a steady 1,644 with eight cores and 16 threads. Compare that to this $4,000 DIY build, which clocked just under 3,300 on Cinebench consistently, and you'll quickly see why building your own PC shouldn't be out the question. So I mentioned that this is my first PC build. I spent a bit of time on YouTube and forums really trying to pick up and select the right part that would complement my build. This will be my primary workstation for editing photos at home. As such, I need something that's gonna have a ton of processing power to handle large file formats like cameras like the Canon 5DS and medium format. I think it's also extremely important to mention that those files will not be stored on the drives of the PC, but instead will be saved on a completely different storage device for long-term storage and client access. Beyond photo editing for clients, I've spent the last couple of years producing video content like this. And oftentimes, what's led to not producing content is just the sheer time it takes to edit and render video takes. So I wanted to build a machine that would maximize my time when producing content. This build does just that. Therefore, every part that I selected was influenced by the software I plan to use and how it directly influenced my time producing content. As an example, the primary programs I'll be using are Adobe Lightroom, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Premiere, and Adobe After Effects, and maybe some light gaming when I'm not working. Now, why does that matter? Well, as of right now, when you're editing Premiere Pro, the project file that you're working on is loaded onto the memory, or your RAM. But the files themselves are streamed from where they're saved on the storage disks. So if your storage devices aren't up to speed, it can create a huge bottleneck for the entire system. On the other hand, if you have a really fast storage device where your CPU can't handle all the tasks that you're throwing at it, or you don't have enough system memory, then it's not going to perform tasks as quickly. So the best approach is to have a balance between the speed of your storage device and the power of your CPU and the space you allotted for memory. Also something that you should consider is your GPU. While your GPU won't assist in the actual encoding process, certain GPUs can actually speed up the exporting speed in certain areas like scaling footage, blending mode, crop, brightness, and contrast. To get that result, you'll need to invest in a graphics card that offers CUDA processing or OpenCL. So keeping all that in mind, let's talk about which parts I selected and how they fit into my workstation. First, let's talk about the processor. I went with an AMD Ryzen Threadripper 1950X, which comes with 16 cores and 32 threads. As of today, this is one of the best budget to performance processors that you can find on the market, especially in terms of multitasking. The CPU cooler is none other than the Corsair Hydro H100i V2. It's an all-in-one water cooler, which is mounted to the front of the case in a pull-pull configuration to the bottom two Corsair SP120 fans on my case. Speaking of which, my case is the Corsair 570X, and I personally love this case because of the beautiful tempered glass. The CPU is mounted to the Oros Gaming 7 motherboard, which provides me with three M.2 slots so that I have the option of mounting multiple NVMe M.2 SSDs. The motherboard has eight USB 3.1 Gen ports, one USB Type-C port, one USB Gen 2 port, along with five audio jacks. For memory, I'm using 64 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 3200 RAM, which is more than plenty for rendering projects in Premiere Pro and After Effects. I've also included three Corsair SP120 fans for exhaust to mount on the top and on the back of my case. This makes for a total of eight fans all together to keep that 1950X extremely cool. For data storage, I'm running a single 500 gigabyte Samson Evo NVMe M.2 SSD for my boot drive, and that's being backed up by Samson 850 Evo 500 gigabyte 2.5 inch solid state drive. 
My graphics card is the Black Gaming Edition EVGA GeForce GTX 1080 Ti SC. The GPU is probably overkill for video editing, but the fact that it offers CUDA processing means that it'll assist me with some tasks in Premiere Pro and After Effects. Plus, it makes a great graphics card for gaming on the weekends. Attached to my GPU, I've also used an EVGA power link to reroute the power input for the graphics card to pull the cables away from the cooling lines of the radiator. This keeps everything looking extremely tidy and takes some of the stress off my power cable so they're not crimped at an odd angle. Finally, my whole system is powered by an EVGA Supernova 850G3, which is completely modular and made it a breeze to wire my specific system. And that's about it. That's my whole entire PC build. I plan on showing my whole desk setup in the next couple weeks. Until then, I figured I'd share what my PC editing build looks like uh, that'll be included in my desk setup build. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to ask and leave them in the comments section below. Thank you guys for watching and you guys have an amazing day.